It's my great pleasure to introduce the next speaker, who I've known for approximately five years. And in that five years, I've gotten to meet him a number of times. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Alex Collier is uh, his courage. It takes a lot of courage to come out and speak a truth that people aren't ready for. Uh, and to tell people that you've had face-to-face -face meetings with uh, extraterrestrials, human-looking extraterrestrials, who have given you these incredible insights and information, is not an easy thing in a very skeptical world. And you pay a very heavy price, and it takes a lot of courage to do that. And Alex has been doing this since uh, 1990. Uh, for well over a decade, he paid a very heavy price for doing that, and he continues to do so. He had to go basically quiet for a number of years, had to go kind of like underground, semi-retirement, but only the last year, it's only the last year that he's come back to give some public presentations to talk about what is really an ongoing set of experiences with these phenomenal extraterrestrials from the Andromeda constellation. There's really not much I can say to introduce you or to prepare you for, the, for what Alex has to say. It really is something to be open to. Uh, it's not an easy thing to accept that people are having these kinds of experiences, but I can assure you it's very, very real. It's something the government does not want you to know about. They are happy to let you know about scary stuff happening out there. But they don't want you to know about the experiences with really benign, loving, beautiful beings from the stars that are here to help us evolve to our next level. And so with that, I am honoured to introduce our next speaker, Alex Collier, who can really open us up to this remarkable phenomenon. Alex. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much um, for attending this presentation. I want to thank uh, Dr. Sala and Angelica and uh, all the staffs, the staff uh, for this incredible pre uh, conference. Um, it's just remarkable, and, and my wife and I are thrilled to be here. Uh, we just love the islands, and it's, it's a great escape from the mainland. Um, what I don't want to do today is go into a lot of background. There is more than enough information out there. I, I know if you just type in my name, some things will come up, okay, uh, both pro and con. And I would just encourage you to research it and, and make up your own mind. What I want to do, though, is um, I want to just get, get right into it. I'm traditionally a very slow starter in a, in a, in a, in a talk, and I, I want to avoid that. Um, the, bulk of the, the bulk of the talk will be about mentorship. Um, I want to spend um, about... 15, 20 minutes, um, just kind of bringing you up to speed with things that are going on in the world. Um, obviously, I'm going to assume you're all paying attention to what's going on. Um, the world politically is changing dramatically. Uh, we are moving towards a fascist world government. Uh, individual liberties and rights are disappearing all the time. In fact, here in the United States, the only reason we have a Bill of Rights is because of the Second Amendment, because they haven't figured out how to get the guns. Uh, the Constitution is, is essentially gone. They're, they're doing whatever they want, whenever they want, regardless of the, of the boundaries and the chains that the Constitution limited, limited them to. Um, we have a world financial crisis. All of these things are done as a matter of control. And essentially what we have is we have had a, we've had a global government for some time actually, but now they're just becoming more and more overt about it because they feel so confident that they have everybody exactly where they want them. Uh,
the next couple of years are just going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to seem like 50 years, all the changes that are going to occur. In the end, however, we will look back at it and say, my God, what a blessing. Because clearly what we're doing and what we have created for ourselves isn't working. It has only detached us so much, not only from the earth, but from who we actually are as souls, as beings. So it's not sustainable in any way, shape, or form. Even if, we, even if the governments of the world came clean and said, okay, we, have, we are colonizing Procyon and Altar, and we have found all of these resources, and we're bringing them to the earth, and everything's going to be okay, it is still unsustainable. And the reason for that is we are not living a spiritual life. And that's what we are. We're spiritual beings. Okay? Um, we are not a natural resource to anything or anybody. And over the years, being with, the, being with Moronet and Phaseas of the constellation of Andromeda and others, it, it, what's been very difficult for me, the learning curve for me was being able to shift my perspective to, to how they view us. And that's been a real challenge. Um, because, you know, this reality is, is so real. It is so solid. And having been born and raised a Catholic and come from a very large family, um, gone through the, indoctrinate, uh, the dogma, the indoctrination, you know, that many of us have gone through as kids, um, it's been pretty tough to just push it away and just take that huge leap of faith that, okay, this is all wrong or... It isn't sustainable. It isn't right. I'll just take that leap, that risk, and just kind of move away from it, pretend it isn't there, and, and try something different. There have been enormous challenges. And I, and I know I'm speaking to the choir. I know that this is a very evolved group, and I know that you have all gone through that. Uh, vision quests, uh, tremendous losses in our lives, all of these things challenge us. And those events help define who we are and who we've become. There is, Earth is complicated. There is a darkness is here that is present on earth and under the earth and around the earth, okay? I don't want you to think that it doesn't exist. Earth is a great example of duality. And it's taken me a very long time to get to this place where I'm actually very grateful at this point for that duality, for that darkness, for learning about that darkness. Um, because, of, because I have spent a lot of energy challenging it, butting up against it, saying, how dare you, fighting it, uh, talking about it, etc. Now, it does exist. It is real. And it is partially us, and then there's an element of it that is not us. It is not human. Okay? It's dimensional, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. But what it's done is that it's helped me realize what it is I don't want. So once you've come to that place of realizing what you don't want in your life, you can actually begin the work of building what you do want. Because intention is everything. Okay? And you have to have intent in order to create anything, even ourselves. There had to be the initial intention to want to experience, to want to create physicality, to want to leave eternity to come down and begin this journey of physicality. Whether it's here on Earth, whether it's in Andromeda, the Pleiades, Orion, it doesn't matter. They have, they're all doing the same journey. 
We're just at different levels. That's all. And I can tell you that the Andromedans, which are fifth density beings, they don't, they don't, they wouldn't want to walk third density. I've given them plenty of opportunities to trade places with me. No, they weren't interested at all. <laughs> okay, not interested at all. In fact, you know, one of the biggest, one of the, <laughs> I, one of the things that the first time I kind of put it out there was they, Morinay and Phaseus looked at each other and Morinay said to Phaseus telepathically, because they're telepathic, how would we ever use money? Because they don't use money. They don't, they don't have a monetary system. It's completely, they just don't go there, okay? So they, would, they didn't, didn't understand it. Um, and if you've looked at some of the research, um, I did a presentation on money for them. Uh, Morin A had asked me to do that. And after several contacts of going through this presentation, Viseas just looked at me when it was over and he goes, I don't understand. Why do you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on? Okay? And that question still haunts me to this day. The changes that are coming are going to be nothing short of profound. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about 2012. I don't know the exact dates. I don't think anybody does because we are still creating our future. We're creating it every day, every moment, individually and collectively. But there are some remarkable things that are coming out, not only in science, uh, medicine, where uh, quantum physics, and there are many wonderful speakers here at this show who are talking about that, and there are many other people out there um, in the world talking about these things, where they're literally proving that there is so much more to us than we've ever imagined. For a lot of you, it's like, duh, we already knew that. You know, we've been beating, our, beating that horse for years, trying to get people to, to come into that place, to finally get it, okay? Well, miraculously, people are starting to get it. At least they're asking the questions which is huge, okay? They're, they're open to the idea of, well, maybe there is more to this. The biggest leap that the extraterrestrial races are excited about is the idea of us being open to extraterrestrial life, number one, and number two, to the idea of letting go of our dogmas. Because if you can't if we cannot let go of the dogma, we cannot embrace other possibilities. Because what we're going to find out is that many of the dogmas that we have held as cherished truths were false all along. And we have been building civilization on lies. And that's why none of it has held up. There's also um, a program that a gentleman by the name of Cliff High has created um, called Half Pass Human, WebBots. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. I would suggest you research it. It's, it's fascinating. And, you know, short note, cliff notes of it, essentially what it is is he has created spiders and he puts in looking for verbiage and words and he's been able to essentially tap into the entire global internet for language, of language. And what he's tapped into, I believe, is the subconscious of humanity, which is fascinating. It's dire, it's grim, but if you realize the conditioning we've had for Armageddon to believe that Armageddon had to occur, that there had to be an end of the world, that there had to be a final judgment of everything we've done, that it only makes perfect sense that, that this would be the steps that we would take to get to that place, to prove ourselves right. The truth is, we don't have to create any of that. Okay? It's an opportunity for us to take a look at these possible scenarios and say, you know what, I don't want that. I'm done with that. Okay? I'm choosing this, and then we can start to build and create 
something different. And that's literally where we are as a, as a society, as a humanity, okay? In service to each other, we will remain free. And it's about freedom. All of this is about freedom. Free will and freedom. True liberty. Earth was never meant to be a slave planet. You were never meant to be slaves. And you should absolutely resist going there because it is not who and what we are. I can't say it any simpler than that. Now, it doesn't mean that you just turn the other cheek, and it doesn't mean that you don't stand up for yourself. You have to. To do nothing, to say nothing, you're condoning the actions of others. That doesn't mean you have to march, but what you should do is make the choice. Send your intention out every day, every moment that something comes your way that you're not happy about, send an intention to change that situation. It'll, it will create a sphere of energy, of conscious energy, which is happening already around the world. I know this is somewhat of a review here, but I will tie this in to where we're going with, with the presentation. What's fascinating also is that I move in a lot of different circles. I have been in aerospace for a great deal of time. Um, I have worked with the military on many different levels um, in lasers and, as, and network security, things like that. What's fascinating is that these guys are actually starting to get it. They really are. And there are quite a few issues within the ranks where they realize that the path we're going can only lead into the destruction of the country and to world war. And they don't want to go there. And there's a lot of pushback. A lot of pushback. They're beginning to pull back the other way. The veterans who have already been through this nonsense, they already know. And they're digging in. And they're getting ready to say no. So this is all very positive. It may not look like it because there's a lot of friction. But it is positive because what we're doing is we're standing up and saying, you know what? Enough is enough. And that is the first step. It really is the first step. That's encouraging to many of the extraterrestrial races who have been sitting up there watching us, who have been visiting the Earth, who have been in underground facilities in the ocean, who have been interacting with humans and having contacts with many different human beings all over the planet. Billy Meyer is not the only one. There are many. Um, they're encouraged because now they feel like they have something to work with. Because whatever they do to intervene, to intercede, it has to empower us. Otherwise, it's futile. If we will not take responsibility for ourselves, for our homes, for our planets, for each other, there's nothing to work with. They're extremely encouraged. So much so that the Andromedan Council has begun discussing mentorship of Earth. And as of right now, there are four races who have already signed up. And genetically, they are connected to Earth. Now, genetically connected to Earth means that they have been here in the past. They have probably been some of the gods that have been worshipped, who have left offspring and have created civilizations. Okay? Here. And we're the remnants of it. This is why we have already so many different races. There's a lot more to all this. We also have a situation where our solar system is moving through a very particular part of the galaxy. We are moving through a plasma belt. We are moving through the galactic plane. And this causes a lot of shifts. It changes everything. It's like the ultimate Mercury retrograde. 
which, which can be pretty scary, actually. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to sit down. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The bad guys are about to play their last trump card. They're done. They're already done. Okay? We have begun the process of freeing ourselves from all this shit. Bravo. Bravo. We have done what centuries... We are about to do what centuries of human beings have not been able to do, and that is get the big picture and realize that we are all one, that no matter how much we disagree, you're, you're my brother, you're my sister, and there's nothing I can do to change that. We have to figure out how to live together, and in reality, we can live together. We can. It's just, it's ridiculous to think we can't. In fact, we have to really work hard at not learning to live together. Okay? War is the enemy. It is not the solution. It has become the enemy. We have technology that we simply cannot control, and we have technology that we don't even know about. Free energy, you've heard Mr. Allen's uh, talk last night, for those of you who are here. There are many others talking about free energy. We have it. In fact, cold fusion has been nailed. It does exist. A program working under DARPA has solved it, and literally for under $2 million, they can build a system that can power a city of 50,000 people indefinitely. It's a done deal, but they're sitting on it. They're sitting on propulsion systems that could take us to the stars. They're sitting on magneto drives that we could put in automobiles that can run forever, electric cars. They're sitting on this. Even though you paid for it, we built the technology, okay? We don't own it. Private corporations do. But that's okay. That's okay. Because in the end, they won't be here, okay? They're done, okay? It's all done. Now, what we have to focus on is what we want to create. Mentorship is not where we are saved, we are rescued. They're going to come down and police our streets. That is not what this is about. Okay? In their opinion, the idea of mentorship is to show you the possibilities. And the first thing that they would do would be, number one, to introduce us to ourselves. Give us some real, genuine history and probably show us on the planet where that history is so we can then again dig it up and prove it to ourselves. This is who we are. This is where we come from. This is what really happened. Okay? And this is where all the programs of war and hate and greed have come from. Okay? These are all learned behaviors, ladies and gentlemen. These are all learned behaviors. When we left the creation, when we left God, Great Spirit, we didn't have this crap with us. These are all learned behaviors. We all fell into time, and then we decided to try the light, and then try the dark, and then try the light, and then try the dark, and see how far we could go and how we would come back home. Okay, it's all been an experiment, all in the process of creating ourselves. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, especially when you can step out of the concept of time. Um, and you realize we've been doing this dance forever, forever and ever and ever and ever, okay? Now, as far as initiating mentorship, I bless you. I was um, asked at the Awaken Aware conference for Project Camelot to float it. In other words, to put it out there. They wanted to see, the Andromedans and the other groups wanted to see what would happen with the idea of it moving out through consciousness. Okay, I've been asked 
to take it to another step now. They're, they are excited about this because this mentorship is literally our initiation into a much larger galactic family, which I can't even tell you how incredible it is. And it isn't anything where we need in any way, shape, or form to feel inferior about. Um, in fact, we are really, despite everything else, we are really pretty far along. An example. In mentoring, one of the things that, that the group will do is they will discuss spirituality. Now, in discussing this, I have been told that there will be at least four or more perspectives on spirituality that will be presented to us, not just one. They all have things in common, but different civilizations have different ways of expressing themselves. And there isn't just one way to express yourself. This is, this is a very touchy subject, which is why I'm bringing it up first, regarding spirituality. Okay? These are not religions. These are not dogmas. These are things that you will be able to test yourself, prove to yourself about yourself. Okay? It'll be about the science of the soul, hard physical proof that you do exist as a soul. So there's no more question you know you live beyond. You know that you retain consciousness. You know that you have cellular memory. And the reason you have cellular memory in your bodies is because of your soul. All of this will be shown to us, proven, so that we will, beyond a shadow of a doubt, know that we don't have to go to hell, that we aren't going to hell, that we aren't going to go to purgatory, none of that crap. It's, it's bunk. It's all bunk. Okay? We can let go of those, that, that dogma. That's done. Okay? There is karma, but we set that up for ourselves. Those are all lessons. But you can balance those things. And we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. Technology. There was a lot of things that I, I, I had a lot of questions regarding technology, uh, free energy, things of that nature. According to Mornay, we pretty much have most of what we already need. It's just been suppressed um, in the technology sphere. In fact, we have technology now that we're using every day that we could improve dramatically to make it last forever. Circuit boards. There are things apparently we can do with circuit boards that we use today that in our narrow, narrow short-sightedness, we're not implementing to its fullest capacity or potential. So we have most of what we need here. Planetology, what they call planetology, which we call geology here, is when you talk about energy, um, they would teach us the cycles of the Earth, how oil is created, petroleum is created, fossil fuels are created, and essentially what those cycles are. So that if we decided to stay with those, we would be able to rotate between fossil fuels, natural gas, solar, etc. So there would not be any disharmony. We would not overuse the Earth's resources in any way, shape, or form. But we don't know those sciences. All we do is we find it, we pump it out of the hole, we fill it full of seawater, and then we move on. Okay? And eh, wrong answer. Okay? Um, electricity. We have electric cars. There is technology that already exists that can be improved. They literally do not have to give us anything else at the moment except ideas that we can create. Their, their thoughts were, why aren't all the major cities inside the cities using electric vehicles? Because you're traveling short distances inside major cities. Why not use electric there and then use petroleum on the outside? for longer distance and for shipping, things like that, at least to start. They're just, they have so many suggestions 
that we could use right off the bat. The biggest change, the biggest mentoring, would be in health. They have a camera, a holographic camera. And it was interesting, Mr. Uh, Mellon Thomas made reference to this yesterday, last night in his talk. They have this camera, and I've talked about this in the past, where they take a picture of you, and it's a holographic camera. It's, it's you from inception to now, physical. They can take this slide out, this holographic slide, and they can look at your body in sequences, and they can pull areas where your body was the strongest, whether it be liver, kidneys, uh, bone structure, nervous system, brain waves. It could be anything. And what they do is wherever your body was the strongest, they will pull that slide out. They will put it back in the camera, and they will reinvigorate, reheal your body with your own imprint. And apparently, we have the ability to create such a thing. All the components are spread out. They're not pulled together yet. But we can do that. Okay? And we're talking about healing without surgeries. That's not to say that there won't be times where there may not be an immediate surgery. I don't know that. Politics. The mentoring ship of politics. They, they consider politics and religions the same thing. Okay? And this is the area where they're very reserved regarding us. And the reason for that is how will we know uh, no, let me, let me rephrase that. Can we, will we, let go of traditions and dogma to embrace something we don't know? I'll give you an example. A Bill of Rights individual liberties. It took thousands and thousands and thousands of years to get to a place where humanity on a subconscious level was so done with monarchies, tyrants, kings, and princes that we decided collectively to create individual liberties. And it manifested physically in the creation of the United States. Here we are 232 years later, and we're about to lose those liberties that took thousands and thousands of years to, to create, to manifest for all of humanity. Okay? Now, what's interesting is that the rest of the world, they're stunned that Americans could be this stupid. In, in fact, in, in traveling in Europe, I had the occasion to see some Swiss students get arrested. And one of the things that they said to the cops were, you know, you got to read me my Miranda rights. Because <laughs> they were watching American television. And the Swiss police said, you don't have any rights. Okay? Now, I bring this up only because this is an issue. This is an issue of freedom. And this is important in the, glo in, in, in the grand scheme of things. If you will, if you protect your freedoms, you are, state, you are stating to everyone, including yourself, I am responsible. And that is the number one priority to taking the next step forward into advanced maturity in meeting face-to-face -face with benevolent extraterrestrial races. They are not going to babysit. It never works. It's not their job. Their job is to get a, give us a start because we have been so manipulated for so long. It would seem like forever. And we haven't even been aware of it. But, but people are waking up. People are beginning to become aware of it. But we have to protect our freedoms. Okay? 
The world, Earth, was never meant to be a slave colony, a slave planet. That was not the intent at all. And we should never put up with it or tolerate it in any way, shape, or form. Okay? We need to tell them to kiss our ass. So that's the big concern. Will we make that leap? Will we let go of having to be right in order to know what the truth is? I've had that very question put up to me, you know, said directly to me. Can we also truly learn to forgive? Because everybody's had a role to play here. Okay? We've all had a role to play in creating this, this scenario, this game. Now, This whole thing about advanced maturity, this whole thing about extraterrestrial life, this whole thing about a resurgence of spirituality, this whole thing about relearning Mother Earth and living in harmony, and finally you know, giving the indigenous cultures their due and their acknowledgement because they were right all along. Okay, We were wrong. Civilized. Um, Industrial civilizations, they're not in balance. It's not to say they can't be, but what we've created is completely out of balance and has pushed the earth to her limit. So we have to give them their due. This is all about us. We are the ones calling this forward. We are the ones who have asked for this. We are the ones who are making this change ourselves, within ourselves. We are the ones. This isn't where, well, nobody else is responsible for this but us. Okay? Apparently, on some level, we have decided this is as far as it goes, whether it's conscious or not, globally, but there's enough of it, enough conscious people who are making these choices to decide that this is as far as it goes the way it is. And it is ending. It is ending. Life, the way we have lived, is going to be changing. Okay? It could happen very quickly. It could happen somewhat gradually. Gradually would be better. But right now, the it looks like it's going to be happening quickly. Now, is the world going to end? No, it's not going to end. That's not our destiny. We didn't work this hard and go through this much crap just to have it end. Okay? No, that, that's, that's not how it's going to go. Um, but there is going to be change. And it's going to be uh, physical as far as our bodies. It's going to be physical as far as the earth. And I think psychically, that's going to be the biggest challenge for everyone. Because we have lived a predominantly material life, only to find out that all the energy we put into investing in creating a material life has done nothing to fill the voids inside of us. And people are going to have their own dark nights of the soul when they come to that place and they look at themselves and they just say, oh, shit, it was all for nothing. Okay? And I know lots of people who are going through that right now, especially men. They did all the right things, said all the right things, worked all the right jobs, dedicated themselves, gave themselves away, all to find themselves completely empty. And they're having to look at that. And they're having to realize Everything that they had been taught, much of it, wasn't what it's about at all. It's not what it's about. 
It's going to bug the men the most. Ladies, you're already so intuitive. You're just, I know, I told you so. <laughs> yeah, I already hear it. I told you so. Okay. So I said it for you. Okay. But the guys now, the guys are going to have to reach down deep inside of ourselves, and we're going to have to look for that intuitive piece. We're going to have to learn to trust that intuition and not just our ability to mentally strategize everything that's going to happen in the world. Well, if this happens, I can do that. If that happens, I can do this. If this, these two things happen, well, I can do that. But then there's this, so I need to compensate for that. I mean, we make ourselves crazy doing this, okay? Because we haven't really learned to, to get to that place inside where we just learn to trust the flow. Because we've not embraced the flow in a very long time. Now, I don't necessarily mean the gentleman in the group here, okay? But I am talking about the outside world. There are a lot of people really struggling because they've done all the right things and they cannot understand why it doesn't work, okay? And they're blaming God, they're blaming their relationships, they're blaming everything, the government. And it isn't any of that. It's just that we've been on the wrong path and we've been building the wrong kind of life. And now we have an opportunity to do something different. But, oh, it's not a but. But we need, what we need to do, though, is we need to focus on what is it that we want to create. What does a planet of peace look like? What does a planet without war look like? Do we still want to have a planet that has a monetary system? Do we want a planet where there are no pharmaceutical companies, we just use natural ways of healing, color, light, and sound? You know, these are not going to be, these are not overnight transitions, but it's a preparation. And those of us who have gotten it and have been talking about it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you're now finding yourselves coming to a clearing and there are going to be people waiting for you saying, how did you know? Can you, can you teach me everything? I need to know now everything. Because our survival instinct is so strong. And we realize that the system we have isn't working. It's coming apart. And we're blessed that it hasn't happened all at once. That we can take this gradually. But it is happening. Okay? The blinds are being lifted. People are coming out of their comas, and this is what it's about. And it's happening in all walks of life. Let's take the 2012 scenario for a moment. Let's suppose there was going to be a pole shift. Okay, this is strictly a hypothetical, all right? And it's an interesting lesson exercise. Let us suppose for a moment that there was going to be a pole shift and half of the world's population was going to be gone. That the world could only sustain half. And the government came out forward and said, hey, this is really what's going to happen. And we've been preparing ourselves. We've built our underground facilities. Sorry they're not for you. We've been building bases on the moon and Mars. Sorry they're not for you. And we have all this advanced technology, but there's no point giving it to you because all this is going to happen to the planet. You're on your own. Not that they would ever, ever be that honest. Okay? <laughs> okay? Well, let's just suppose. So let's suppose you now knew for a fact that we had a year and a half to two years. No one knew who was going to make it. You didn't know where the safe places were. What would you do different with your life? What would you do with those last two years? Would you start selling real estate? <laughs> right? Would you become an artist? Would you allow yourself to fall in love again? Would you allow yourself to give forgiveness that you've been denying someone 
Would you want to heal old relationships? Would you want to write a book? Would you want to travel? Would you want to learn to swim? I mean, whatever. What would you do differently if you knew you had two years? Now, I'm talking about as, as a planet. Now, individually, people face these realities every day through disease, cancer, and the such. You know, and they're the bravest people in the world because they know. They've been given a diagnosis that's terminal. Many, of, many don't die, but others do. But they live with that every day. And every day, they have the courage to get up and keep doing whatever it is that they want to do. What would we do differently as a society, as a global planet? This is not just an American issue. This is a planetary issue. And I have to tell you, the extraterrestrials don't see us as Russians, Chinese, Americans, Japanese. They don't see any of that. We are one race. Irregardless of our differences and our languages, we are one race to them. Only we don't believe that. We're the only ones who don't believe that. Okay? What would we do differently? What would you do with your life? How would you live it? Would you be the most benevolent person you know? Would you go the other way? You know, would you be a gangsta? You know? Would you sing love ballads or would you sing rap? You know, everybody. The reason I, I, I ask this is that the future isn't set. Now, there's talk. I heard something recently about a star, a star going nova. That's about 3,200 light years from us. Don't worry about that. There's more than enough help here that that's not how it's going to go for us. Okay? That, that, that's not going to happen. I mean, it may go nova, but technology exists, and there are plenty of resources in our particular solar system right now to ensure that that's not how we're going to end, okay? Because there are a lot of people very, very curious about us. Now, the reason I say that is that we are a planet that has 22 very specific genetic markers, okay? We are a collection, a collage, a compendium of many different extraterrestrial races living together. This is not common out there, okay? Especially in third density in a very complex ecosystem like we have, okay? It's, it's not, there aren't that many. And they're here to watch us because we are as a civilization at a place where many of them have been before. And that is, is that we are spiritually evolving. At the same time, we have created technology that we barely know how to contain and use. The technology was created in a space of fear. Those using it, holding it, maintaining it, controlling it, are in a space of fear. Humanity, however, is at a space where it's beginning to step out of that reality to create something new. So what you have is you have a consciousness that sees itself becoming completely irrelevant. Which makes them unpredictable. You know, and nuclear weapons are no laughing matter, ever. Okay? Now, there are extraterrestrial races, benevolent extraterrestrial races, having contact with some military sources on Earth from different countries. God, there is just so much going on. 
And the wild card here really is us. We're the kingpin. We need to continue on this movement of not only sticking together, but focusing on what it is that we really want. What kind of world do we really want? We can't be, we really can't be serious about wanting to create a global government that controls every aspect of our lives. Look at what they've done with the world already. Why would we trust them with anything else? We can't. We simply can't because they're not us. They see us as a natural resource. Therefore, we need to turn our focus completely away from them and create what we do want so that their paradigm completely collapses on itself. And it needs to because it isn't real. It's not us. It's all about them. Okay? So, what is it that we would want? The protocols for contact. This is very difficult. And what makes it difficult isn't the actual, okay, here we are, you know, now you see us, here's our ships, now you know we're real, okay? The difficult part is, how do we set up the protocols? How do we approach them as an equal without worshiping them, because that will make them leave in a heartbeat, the benevolence anyway, they're not into that, okay? The regressives, they'll be more than happy to allow you to worship them, because we've got a history of that already. It's in the Bible, Old Testament, Egyptian books, Sumerian texts. We've got plenty of history of that. Okay? That's never served us either. Begin within yourselves to begin visualizing what the protocols would look like. Now, in the last conversation that I had, I asked who would be the most likely people at the moment, the way things are now, that they would contact to begin a dialogue regarding mentorship? And the answer would probably surprise you. It definitely isn't the United States, okay? Even though we have probably the most advanced technology the world's known since Atlantis. It's the Japanese would be the Japanese government at this moment. Because of their prudence, because of their integrity, and because of their dedication to their own people. Now, that's something to think about, okay? This is a country that took two, three nuclear weapons, <laughs> okay? And look at how far they've come. So, when will this happen? I'm not exactly sure. I do know that between now and the fall of this year, huge events are going to occur. Um, some absolutely wonderful and some not. I also want you to know that the Andromedans are very concerned about the Earth moving through this gravitational plasmic field, which we call the galactic plane. It is their concern that the planet itself, when it hits it, because of its vibration, its frequency, it's going to bounce off of it at first creating a huge global quake. But there have been discussions as to whether to intervene, to, in other words, align something in front of the Earth to open the pathway through it, or to allow this to occur naturally. Now, the natural part is this. When the Earth moves through the galactic plane, the Schumann residence of the planet is going to change. It is going to become much, much higher than what it is right now. All, all 
indigenous life on, that, on the planet will then have to change its harmonic frequency to match that of Earth. Many species will not be able to. A lot of human beings will not be able to. But those that do, it will be a, it'll be a natural transition into what we know as fourth density, and in some respects, fifth density. Those kids that are coming in with three strands of DNA, they will be able to go between three, four, uh, four and five. They will be telling us, coming back, and teaching us what's ahead of us. They will become the educators. Okay? Half of the Maritis anyway, who have volunteered to come into this place simply because none of our forefathers have ever experienced this before. So, I don't know if there'll be intervention on that or not. There will be earth changes. Okay? And I don't know at the moment if that happens where the safest place to be is. I don't know at this point. If I find out, I'll definitely let you know. Okay? Um, but intuitively, you will get it. I'm sure you will get it, that you will be exactly where it is you're supposed to be. And you will know exactly what it is you're supposed to do. Okay? You have to know that, because that's what this is about. When we pass through this plane, we will become an agrarian society once again, which I thought was fascinating because Mr. Mellon Thomas talked about that yesterday as well, last night. Based on his death experiences, that's what he was shown as well, that we become an agrarian society again. It's not to say manufacturing will go away, it won't, but we will not solely be on it. We will, we will, we will, be, we will become indigenous people once again with the planet. I'm also told that many people, once we have passed through this transition, this change in frequency and harmonics, that many people will opt to go to different star systems and represent Earth, represent our civilization. Because there is a huge um, perk to being the only planetary society to actually go through such a shift as this. And the fact that we represent 22 different extraterrestrial races here genetically and are considered genetic royalty that we will be invited to participate on levels absolutely unimagined to us at this point. Okay, we will become ambassadors. We will be teaching other societies basically what not to do. <laughs> okay, because we're the professors. We have become the professors. A gentleman, and I'm not sure if he's here, his name is uh, Gilbert. He's, I spoke with him yesterday. He asked me to give him, in one sentence, the bottom line to all this. And I've been searching for that one sentence, that bottom line, all my life. Um, but I heard someone else say it yesterday. And, and it is simply, love your life. You just You can't say it any better than that. Um, you know, we've lived in the duality of light and dark. But we've almost completely ignored the fact that there's a third duality here, and that's balance. Okay? We have always been somewhere between the two, never realizing that the balance is actually its own duality as well. And none of us have give that, given that space enough credit. And we certainly don't teach that in our spiritual philosophies uh, or religions of the earth, of just finding the balance. Um, many of the indigenous cultures have known that all along. You know, they've known about the balance. 
Um, and in, in saying that, I, I brought that up specifically because what needs to be acknowledged here is that the United States changed the world. It changed its perspective. It changed the direction. Uh, up until now, it has probably done more good than harm. But the consciousness of America has radically changed. For the last 60 years, we've been creating enemies, fighting enemies, creating enemies, fighting enemies, fascism, communism, tyranny, and then creating tyranny, communism, fascism, so much so that we have now, that our government has now become the monster that it has been fighting all along. Okay? There's a great lesson there in holding on to something and putting too much energy into something that you actually become that which you hate. Okay, we're faced with that. I want you to know that there is not a single benevolent extraterrestrial race up there, the Andromedans at all, who are going to do anything about our government. That's our problem. We let this get out of hand. We let them get out of control. We let them usurp our rights. We let them build all this technology without sharing it. We've let them run amok. We have not managed our re constitutional republic, and we have let them take our rights away. That's our responsibility to fix. Now, I'm not advocating overthrowing the government, but what I am advocating is the fact that you absolutely stand up for yourselves and don't take this horseshit any longer. We simply can't do it. It's become a detriment to the planet. Okay? And we are responsible for that. Now, having said that, and this is an unintentional plug for Michael, Dr. Sala's book, okay? but I was going to talk about this anyway. In the late 50s, the United States government signed a treaty with an extraterrestrial race who they believed to be benevolent. And agreements were reached, and there were terms to that treaty. And shortly after that treaty was signed and agreed upon, the extraterrestrials broke the treaty because technologically they were far more advanced than we believed they were. Okay, so the government was tricked into it. However, we called that upon ourselves. We brought that experience to us because of our treatment and our behavior with treaties. Just ask the Native Americans. We signed 263 treaties with the Native Americans and we broke 263. And it goes on and on and on. So if you need proof of karma, there is one for you. Okay, we drew that to us. Because we haven't walked our talk. We talk about it. We sing about it at sporting events. You know, we beat our chests, but we haven't walked it at all. Okay? It's in our face, ladies and gentlemen. It's in our face. And once again, America is at the forefront of this. Okay? This economic crisis, in the end, will be a godsend because what will happen is the ridiculous laws and restrictions and regulations we have put on ourselves will all fall away because there'll be nobody to support them. That's number one. Number two, what makes us great is that we think out of the box. We create something out of nothing. We create solutions to impossible problems. That's what's made us great. Okay? We need to go, we need to re-embrace that spirit, that wild spirit that freed the world, that changed the world. It doesn't mean that we cannot share that spirit with other nations. 
because other nations are getting there. Hell, Russia's just as free as we were 25 years ago now. They're changed so dramatically. They realize that what they were doing no longer works. Okay, there's a lesson there. Putin was very specific, don't go to communism, it doesn't work. Okay, but this is not about politics, this is about control. This is about control. And it's about you. It's about me. It's about us. It's about our kids. Okay? It is time to create something different. All you need to do, what I'm, all of that I, I've been asked to tell you, is to consciously, intentionally start thinking about what the world looks like, what a new world looks like, the way you want it, okay? Do you want centralized government? Do you want a monetary system? Do you want to use fossil fuels? Do you want free energy? What is it that you want, okay? We cannot allow a handful of people to decide the direction of all of humanity. They are only, and they are only going to be self-serving. This is our responsibility, because this is our, this is our reality. We're creating this together. And if we embrace that, if we take responsibility for creating all of that reality, we can change this so fast it'll blow your minds. Because we're all extremely powerful. Look at what we've done. Look at what we've done already. It's, it's stunning. I mean, um, an experience that I had when I go on board their fifth density beings. Immediately that I come on board, a belt is put on me. And essentially what the belt does is it holds all of my atoms together so that I don't fly apart, because I'm a third density being. My vibration is very slow compared to them. This belt regulates it, regulates um, the speed of my atoms so that I can actually coexist with them. Now what's fascinating about that, what's fascinating about fifth density as a third density being, is that my body is moving before my thoughts are. In other words, if they start walking, I'm walking before I stop to think about walking. Okay? Because now I'm connected directly to my higher self, to my soul. I'm not waiting for my ego to click in and say, okay, start walking. Okay? The other thing that was very, very difficult, and I'm going to give Joan Ocean credit for this because she brought it up yesterday in a conversation we had is you feel like you're losing yourself. You feel like you're just dissipating, becoming invisible. And you're actually not. What's happening is that on a higher vibration, your ego doesn't exist. It falls away. It simply cannot exist in that harmonic. It has no relevance whatsoever. And then what happens is, and it takes take some time to adapt, is you're confronted with who you really are. You're introduced to yourself. And at first you don't recognize it because we're so conditioned to this. You know, we're so conditioned to all of this that this is what feels real. Logically, we know we have a soul. When we meditate, we get into that space, but we are still totally conscious of the fact that we are in a physical form. There, in fifth density, my experience has been, you don't even think about the physical form at all. Okay? You're moving, your physical form is trying to catch up to you. It's, it's absolutely amazing. What's also amazing is that if you close your eyes, you can see 360 degrees around you. 
and you know exactly what's going on everywhere. I could feel everyone that was around me. I could feel their emotions. I could feel them look at me. I could feel them think about my appearance, what I represented, how I was standing, all of those things. I didn't always hear the telepathic communication because a lot of it wasn't directed specifically at me. When it is, you hear it. And it's like we're speaking now, and you know that it's coming from someone because they're looking directly at you, except their mouth isn't moving, but you're having the dialogue. And for those of you who are mediums or channels, you know exactly what that's like. Okay? We will be moving into all those spaces, all right? We will be, and we need the mentorship so that we don't freak out and flip out so that we can truly understand how to embrace our essential selves, what it's all about. The whole purpose of going through all of this stuff for humanity, all the thousands of years of tests, trials, tribulations, previous pole shifts, all of that was to take our selves through this exercise to move from third through fourth and eventually into fifth density. That's what this has all been about. It's all been a school, okay? And we all volunteered. None of you were taken from a ship, thrown out the window and said, make it, figure it out. It's not how it happens. You know, and I wish it were, because then, then we'd have some, some other excuses, okay? But we don't. That's what this is about. Um, more and more people, probably many of you in this room, are going to begin to have contact. It's happening, it's going to happen all over the world, okay? It's going to be picked up exponentially. Many of the races who have been here studying us, and I would suggest that you research the work of Colonel Wendell Stevens, because he's, he's the foremost authority on contactees around the world. Um, his books are available. There have been many, many races here studying us. They know us better than we know ourselves. And many of them are stepping forward and are going to be stepping forward to say, okay, we are going to participate in this process to help move us along because they understand us. They've been here around us, amongst us. They've observed us. They know the challenges we have. Okay, many of those specific races have been in exactly the same place as we are now. And they knew how to get through the hurdles and they knew how to get through the traps or to avoid the traps that apparently we may be stumbling into here. Okay? Again, I know many of you in this room, if not all of you, have devoted an amazing amount of time into developing yourselves, into finding your balance, to finding your strength, to finding out who you are, what you are, and to find out exactly where you are so that you know where you stand. Okay? Bravo. You deserve every accolade there is. The next step for you, now that you've been there, is to help create the world. What is it that we want the world to look like? Okay? It's us. We have to do this. No one else is going to do this for us. It has to be a grassroots level. All it takes is conversation, discussion, you know, if you put out the intention, I need to know about this information, and you put it out, and you keep putting it out, even if it's just for 10 seconds a day, you will draw that information, that knowledge to you. The right people will come to you. The opportunities will come to you. You have to trust that. I'm learning to trust that. Because I'm a guy, I still overanalyze everything. Okay? But my wife 
is kicking my ass in that direction and making sure I get that. And I love you for it. <laughs> okay. This is all about us. We have drawn this entire experience to ourselves, so we need to own it. And the faster we own it, the more empowered we will become about the process. The more, the more it'll make sense to us, the more intelligent we can discuss it. And as this process begins, people around you will, will you'll find yourself in a position of leadership. Okay? You will find yourself being the teachers. There was a great line in uh, Sterling Allen's presentation uh, quote where he said, uh, if you're one step ahead of the world, you're a genius. If you're two steps ahead, you're a crackpot. Okay, it was a great line. So I borrowed it. Um, we've all been crackpots. Okay, soon we're going to be geniuses, but that's only when the but that's when the real work begins. Okay, and the idea is is to try to get everybody else up to speed. Do what you can. Just do what you can. Don't overextend yourself to the point where you can't keep yourself centered and balanced. You have to keep yourself centered and balanced. Okay? It's not necessary for you to save the world or to want to save the world. If you become the example, it will reflect and other people will get it around you. And the tide is definitely changing. The frequency is changing. Again, I, I, I want to just, I, I want to put this out there one more time. If you had two years left to live on Earth, what would you do with your life? What would you do? Just think about that. What would you do? What would you do differently? If you wouldn't do anything, bravo. You're there. But if you would do something differently, what would you do? What would make you happy? Okay. My wife has a great expression. Um, we're all sitting on the G waiting for the O. Okay. Okay. My wife, Audra, has a great saying, and it's we're all sitting on the G waiting for the O. Ladies and gentlemen, you are my brothers and my sisters. I love you. I am honored by you. I want you to know that I have done the very best I could to represent us. I've, I've had my stuff to deal with as well. I've, I have my own challenges to deal with as well. Okay? But ultimately, in the end, I have absolute faith in us. The world is not going to end, but it is going to change, and it has to. And it's going to change for the better, but we need to be the driving force of that change. Humanity has to be the driving force of that change, not government. Okay? Do not ever, ever surrender your freedoms or liberties to government. It's too self-serving, and it doesn't create anything but laws that restrict our freedoms. You know, you can't possibly need any more uh, examples of that, okay? Um, we have, what, 10 minutes? Eight minutes, five minutes? Does somebody want, do we want to do some questions? That's a, is that a yes? Okay, okay. You know, true to our spirit. 
Uh, I'm curious about what's going on. In, what do they say about what's going on with the Middle East? I'm sorry, what? The Middle East. How Same thing that's always gone on in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're watching it. it. It's all a play. It's all a drama. Okay? It's all about control. It's all about creating war. It's all about distracting us and creating a space of fear. That's what it's about. Because if, if we're all in a space of fear, we are not creating in a space of love. And when we're in fear, we, have, we basically imprison ourselves. We put ourselves in a box. When we're not in fear, we are free to create. In fear, they're in control. In love, we're in control. That's all it is. It's the same drama that's been playing itself out for 4,000 years. It's the same thing. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I am so ready to go home and contact. What, is, is there a good way to prepare for that, or is there a certain signs to look for? Or that's a great any question. Clues? That's a great question. It seems silly. Um, but. I can't honestly tell you one way that's better than another. What I would do if I were you is I would create your own ritual. Create your own ritual. Make it holy. Make it sacred to you. Create your own process of what feels safe and comfortable for you and where it is. Okay? And just allow it to be. And then tell the universe, tell the creator, you're ready. This is what you want. But create the space. Go through your ritual. Um, again, set up your own protocols for how you would want that to work in order for you to feel safe. Because when it happens, it's a shock. It is a shock. It's, it's an amazing shock, but it's a shock. Because your first reaction is going to be, oh, shit, it's real. Okay? And, and then, you know, you'll move through that. They know that. They already know that. Okay? Um, and, then, and then just go with the flow. That would be my suggestion. Everybody would do something differently. That would be my suggestion for you. Create your own protocols. Okay? And make them sacred. Um, Ma'am with the blue and the white sweater. Um, if you've felt like you've had quite a bit of different type of visitation over your lifetime, um, you know, I've never really looked into it or reported it anywhere, and particularly like with one child in a bassinet when I woke up and they came in through the windows and I couldn't move, and I'm wondering where or who would be the best place to go to find out what's going on with this and are we supposed to use it somehow? I'm just looking for the resources to I follow through. Gosh, you know, um, I don't know anyone specifically that I could, that I would feel comfortable recommending you to. Um, you know, it sounds like you know it's there, but you don't have total recall of it, but you know it's there. So it sounds like you need somebody to help move you, somebody that you would feel safe with that would move you through a regression in, into, put you into a safe space in a process of, of unlocking those, those experiences. Um, can I ask you, do you have Native American in your background? Uh, no, I've always felt closely attuned to them. I'm a Native Alaskan. but. I'm Irish and Italian in my lineage, okay. but it's not so much that I don't remember, I do. It's um, wondering how to expand the knowledge of whatever is going on that we're maybe you're supposed to get. Uh, that, that's all. I don't have an answer. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. I just, just pick. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, I really think uh, that it's time to act now to get together into small groups, informally or formally, and go down those 
um, five points that you made and, you know, just codify what we want, visualize it. It's called a mock-up. I don't have a question. Okay. I just wanted to say something and... Um, you go for it, Carl. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is another step in taking our power, is to gather in groups and to agree on a positive mock-up of what we want the world to be, what it will look like, be very specific about it, and the information will happen telepathically with the visitors, and we might even come upon some ideas ourselves without worrying about visitations. Thank you. You're welcome. She brings up a good point about, about taking your, about reclaiming your power. Ladies and gentlemen, you exist because you wanted to. Physi your physicality exists because you wanted it to. The planet exists because you wanted it to. The race exists because you wanted it to. Your reality exists because you wanted it to. The government exists because you created it. Liberty exists, freedom exists because you created it. You have the power all along. You, you can't really even give it away because you are it. You are it. You can not use it. You can, use, you can exercise your free will and not use it, but you always have it. Always. No one can ever take that away from you. Thank you very much.